Welcome. So this is Martin Petella presenting to you about the dangers of being caught in an emergency room in intensive care and being intubated. That is probably the worst outcome we can imagine for a person these days and the consequences of what we're dealing with right now. I titled it How to Avoid the Ventilator after you meet the coronavirus. There's no doubt that we will meet the coronavirus. I don't think that any one of us will be deciding if, it's the when. And of course, the, the reason for that is the following. It's just like any other virus. It's going to come through the society. Eventually, we will encounter it. So we get to control the when, and we get to control the outcomes. My name is Martin Patella. I work as a health coach and a cert certified metabolic typing advisor at Life Enthusiast. I was, I was also trained as a clinical hypnotherapist and um, I spent a good amount of time as a trainer in the uh, computer industry back when, before I became a health coach. I've lectured plenty. I was a systems analyst and management consultant. That's where I went to school. I had the equivalent of an MBA in business administration. And uh, I was working in that field until I realized that uh, the only way I was going to get out of the mercury toxicity hell that I got after 12 mercury amalgam fillings were in my mouth and I became very sick that the moment came that I had to start fixing myself because I was not going to be fixed by the mainstream system. They are not set up for that. I realized that the uh, healthcare industry shouldn't be really called healthcare. It should be treatment industry. They're not really interested in curing things. They're interested in treating things. Um, root cause resolution is the words used by functional medicine practitioners. The, the part of the medical system that calls itself that, functional medicine, focuses on cellular function rather than on dealing with symptoms. And when we resolve the cause of the malfunction, we usually have a success, a health success but this is not what's being practiced in the mainstream medical system. As the metabolic typing advisor, uh, I've now had a decade of practice and I've been working in the field for probably 35 years now. So let's talk about the immune system, what's its normal response versus the system overload that lands a person in the intensive care. When I try to explain to somebody the um, immune system, I, I use the uh, nightclub model. Think of it this way: you have a uh, you have three roles involved in managing the flow and the happiness of the guests. You need to have somebody at the door keeping out the people that you don't want to have in the club, but you need to keep out only the most obvious troublemakers because if you keep out everybody there's not going to be a whole lot going on in the club you have the bouncer that's the person that's inside the club that gets to uh, eliminate the trouble once it erupts on the inside and of course the bartenders they're involved in <laughs> lubricating the crowd with alcohol that's the business of the nightclub, after all, selling you the alcohol. But they also need to be careful enough not to oversell it or overserve it. And they also need to be alert enough to point out the obvious trouble. Here, we're going to focus on the part that's called the bouncer, the part of the system that's involved in dealing with trouble once it's on the inside. So why do I say that we will all eventually have to get it? Because microbes are transmitted throughout 
the community, throughout the society, they get to move on the wind, on the water. They come in all kinds of forms. I mean, we're, we're mostly concerned about the viral right now, but there, of course, are bacterial and protozoal and fungal uh, microbes that uh, come our way. The body has two systems, or the immune system has two branches. One is the innate, the one that has the generalized, nearly instant response to dangers. And then there's the slower one, the acquired or the adaptive, where antibodies are developed for microbes that we may end up encountering in the future. And uh, as you can see on the slide, we have a lot of specialized cells in the body, such as the phagocyte, macrophage, mast cell, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, and uh, natural killer cells, all involved in handing off the function from one to the other, attacking the uh, invaders, making sure that they do not overwhelm. And they need to control one another because if they overdo it, they start damaging the body itself. That's not a good thing. In fact, when the immune system starts malfunctioning, that is the trouble with the body essentially starting to destroy itself. The, um, uh, the solutions that are being offered now are essentially focusing on the adaptive, on the vaccine. We're hoping to hear from the CDC that they have found a way to develop, to develop a vaccine that they can pass from person to person or to many people, and the, um, they can jumpstart the process of creating this immunity to the virus. However, if the innate, the generalized system, were in good repair, it would actually deal with it anyway. So we might not need the vaccine if our, if our internal works were working correctly. The, the way the um, uh, instant response system works, you can see these, uh, that the phagocytes are on patrol, uh, looking for things and suppressing them. The macrophage is the one that released the cytokines, cytokines, the uh, signaling molecules that we are worried about now, because if there are too many, uh, it leads to this overwhelming response, too much of a response. Mast cells are involved in the inflammatory response. People have had a difficult time in a hospital when the uh, secondary infections set in. The way we understand things to happen these days on the, uh, the most worrisome infection, the coronavirus, is that a person will present with hypoxia, essentially a blue patient, a person who's unable to oxygenate sufficiently. And the solution that's uh, being offered is to push more oxygen into the body, into the lungs. However, that may not be the smartest response because if the red blood cells are somehow malfunctioning and they're not able to carry the sufficient oxygen, the correct response would be to try and correct the carrying capacity rather than to try and push more oxygen in. Anyway, in the hypoxic state, as we're now in bed, in a hospital bed, bed rest, it will lead to inflammation and, and uh, water accumulating in the lungs and secondary infection setting in and the mast cells now flooding the, the tissues trying to cause healing, but in the process of trying to cause healing, they're actually causing more damage. 
the neutrophils are now piling on, trying to deal with the bacterial, the secondary infection, for which the uh, patient is prescribed um, antibiotics. However, that's, that's a downward spiral for many people. So the cytokine storm is defined as the immune system too intense, where the local inflammation is going to cause swelling in the tissue, and it's essentially caused by the overactive immune system. And that is triggered by the weakened barriers that allow the transgression or ingression entering of things that shouldn't be on the safe, sterile side of the barriers. And when the immune system gets confused, we are now dealing with the um, autoimmune conditions. There are 200 and something defined name diagnoses with names like Sjogren's and Hashimoto's and things like that. The Corona SARS virus now named COVID-19, we now know is uh, getting inside people with through the eyes, the nose, or the mouth on droplets. So when we are wearing a mask or some face shield, we're protecting others from us. We have also found out that uh, it requires a fairly large amount of droplets to get inside us for us to become infected. That means that when we're in the outdoors where the air is moving, we have a very small chance of becoming infected. Whereas if we are in a closed space with somebody who is a carrier, <coughs> this uh, goes up dram dramatically. Like the, the biggest infections are in cold rooms like a meat packing plant where employees are working close to one another, having to shout at one another over uh, loud noise of equipment and in a refrigerated space, essentially. Or another big infections came from um, like a choir practice meeting where a large number of people spent two and a half hours singing together. So the infected person was able to infect many others. Another classic chain that was followed was a person who attended a funeral and a dinner with a uh, where dishes were shared and where hugs and handshakes and other personal contact was exchanged. That is how but those are the dangerous situations. The difficult bit is that most people are asymptomatic. Indeed, somewhere between 70 and 80% of people who are infected actually have no symptoms. The way this works is that uh, the um, virus enters into the lungs, especially into the lungs, and breaks through the ACE2 receptors that's angiotensin controlling enzyme. Angiotensin, that's blood pressure. Controlling enzyme, that is the enzyme that's within you that controls how your blood pressure is regulated. Anyway, so when this uh, viral infection is not able to be controlled, when it's not stopped by your innate system, and your and your immune system is weak it it just goes into overdrive and then you end up with overreaction of the immune system because it has not been able to suppress it soon enough fast enough it's festering and the response is getting more and more intense you start getting fluid on the lungs uh, you start becoming unable to process oxygen and uh, then, then the critical conditions ensue. What's an interesting question is this, what comes first? Is it your oxygen carrying capacity in the blood or the virus? Does the virus sort of unmask 
they or make worse the oxygen carrying capacity deficit i actually think it's that way i have gone to the worldometer website where we have looked at the statistics worldwide for the health conditions that cause the most health damage or actually the worst outcomes essentially death and it turns out that people who already have a underlying medical conditions are the ones that are most vulnerable and they are the cardio cardiovascular disease diabetes respiratory disease hypertension and cancer and in new york city what was found that the deaths if you look at the table here you will see that most deaths or the number of deaths were in the older clients but only in the older clients who had an underlying condition those who did not were very few so you could say that even old people as long as they were healthy were recovering but the ones who were ill were not where does this come from the chronic inflammation in the body systemic heart disease or circulatory with blood pressure or glucose regulation diabetes or the metabolic problems which lead to obesity or immune disruption which leads to cancer what do these things have in common toxic burden and overall metabolic health so how do we get there how how is it that we became so sick well first of all we need to repair so to repair a person's body we need to be in the parasympathetic mode where we need to be fixing the underlying problem when we sleep we repair or when we rest we repair the parasympathetic is also called rest or repair or digest whereas the sympathetic is called fight or flight so where when we are in the stress side fighting for our survival we are not repairing the other issue is the stagnation the lymphatic system needs to move it needs to move the nutrients toward the cells and the toxins away from the cells so when there's lack of circulation when we stagnate we essentially turn into swamps on the inside and that's not a good thing and then there is the toxicity oh, i'm talking about the toxicity from the industrial age I'll get to that in just a moment. So the resilience of preventing the toxins from getting in is determined at the mucosal barrier. The mucosal barrier is the tissue that uh, lines your nose and your lungs, your mouth and your gut, the digestive system and eliminative and your urethra and your reproductive canal in ladies. And this permeability is greatly affected by availability of iodine, the element that's found in seaweed, seafood, sulfur, the element that's find, found in uh, cruciferous veggies like broccoli and cabbage, and uh, in uh, garlic and onion. But we can, of course, supplement it uh, using bioavailable sulfur and lecithin, which is the universal emulsifier. So how do you actually help restore your lungs health? You need negative ions. Negative ions are that which are electron rich. The positive ions are electron poor. They steal the electrons. And the electrons is essentially the currency of health. The more electrons you have, the more resilient you are health-wise. So where do, they, where do they exist? They are in forests and parks. Go visit with trees. Hug the trees, touch the trees, walk barefoot on the grass, on the beach. You can 
uh, help with air filters by removing the particulates from the air, you can get yourself a better air quality using the ion generators, negative ion generators. And in case you are already infected, you could use ionic silver as a means of blocking the microbes from reproducing. And you could also improve your situation by raising the oxygen level using reactive, reactive oxygen species. We have a product that includes biohydrox. Uh, the product is called Amazing Soak. We need to first and foremost lower the load, lower the chances of having a body that would like to, would likely be overwhelmed or have a less than perfect response. How do we con control that? Well, I mentioned the air. We also have to control the water and food inputs. We want to eliminate toxins from our lives. So filtered water for sure, structured is even better. You can talk to us about the structured water. We sell tools from inexpensive to fancy and convenient. Food, food needs to be, <clears throat> I'll say it this way. When you eat raw, uncooked food that has grown in a healthy soil, you will be ingesting a lot of electrons. That's why cucumbers and lettuce or carrot juice and celery juice are good. Once you cook it, the electrons are taken out. So cooked potato or baked pasta is no longer the source of the electrons that you desire. That's why raw foods are so good for us. It would be advisable to watch what you're putting on your body in the way of cosmetics and what you're breathing in or touching in the way of cleansing or cleaning products. You definitely don't want to be using air fresheners. Those are just very detriment, detrimental to your health. Your clothing, furnishings, and packaging of the products that you buy, they off-gas all kinds of toxins that you probably want to have less of. Try to buy things that are made with natural fibers, are not loaded with uh, fire retardants and uh, protectants and, uh, and permapress and who knows what else, toxic chemical coverage. The less of that, the better. Another important uh, part of the load on your immune system is the electromagnetic frequencies. This has become more and more uh, noticeable as the, uh, as the load is increasing. The 5G rollout of the millimeter waves, you will notice, is happening in the cities where there is the largest amount of illness. Seattle, Washington, New York City, they are rolling out the 5G now. I'm already getting calls from there from people who are finding themselves permanently stuck in the fight or flight mode. They find themselves anxious, nervous, not sleeping well, wondering why this happened. Oftentimes, it is because the 5G antenna just got lit up in their neighborhood. We have some tools to deal with that. We can talk about it later. Here's an important factor. America is one of the most drugs, drugged societies. And by drugged, I mean prescription drugs. And yet, the ACE inhibitors, we were talking about the uh, angiotensin controlling enzyme, being the pathway through which the coronavirus gets into the lungs. Well, when you have a high blood pressure, the first thing that doctor will prescribe to you is an ACE inhibitor. Check what you're taking. If you're taking that, you're probably affected in a negative way, making your situation more vulnerable. The other thing that makes your situation very vulnerable are statins. Statin drugs 
are messing with the cholesterol absorption system in the body, which is then messing around with the immune system's ability to recognize the viruses. I, I mentioned lecithin a little earlier. Lecithin is the tool or the supplement that makes this functioning better. Statin drugs are the supplement, if you want to call it that, that makes the situation worse. And lastly, dust. Indoor dust and outdoor dust, microparticulates uh, from traffic, from factories, from coal burning power plants, and all of that. <laughs> so this, uh, this economic shutdown uh, has been actually very beneficial because it has caused the air to become a lot cleaner. This is an interesting, unexpected benefit. What do we need to do? To offload the burden on our immune system, we want to promote gut health. And 80% of your immune system is actually residing at the interface between the gut and the bloodstream. So you want to make sure that your microbiome is in good order. And for that, we use probiotics. Those are the microbes. And we feed them with prebiotics. Those are the plant materials. Humic and fulvic acid, that's the dirt that actually provides the milieu, the terrain in which these uh, microbes exist. Fiber and herbs, those are the necessary bits that help the immune, uh, pardon me, digestive and eliminative systems to function better. And then uh, try to reduce the foods that are making things worse. We're finding that uh, grains high in gluten are making the gut more permeable and homogenized dairy as in homogenized milk or pasteurized milk, all of that is uh, making things worse. If you're committed to dairy, try and use the goat and sheep rather than cow, because those are much more compatible with the human uh, physiology. Secondary, it would really help if you understood how to feed yourself, because when you feed yourself right, the pH balance is managed. People talk a lot about acidic versus alkaline. Acidic, that's when you are short-tempered and energized and uh, an extreme anxious. Alkaline, that's when you are sleepy, indecisive, procrastinate, but an extreme depressed. We want to be in the middle. So if you're over alkaline, you need to bring it back to middle. If you're over acidified, you need to bring it back into the middle. You can figure out through metabolic typing which you are and which foods are doing this. Either more carbs or more fats are going to be the tools. And when you get it right, your moods will improve. Like you'll be more balanced. Your memory will improve you will actually have a sharper brain your energy will improve you will feel more energized throughout the day and you will be able to uh, um, manage your weight better because as part of the metabolic testing you will also discover your endocrine dominance it's also called body type depending on which dominance you are we can predict what diet will get you slimmer and what diet will get you fatter and uh, for some people it's the high fat ketogenic diet for another it's the more vegetarian uh, carbo diet for another one it's the out and out uh, hunter diet that's required to make things work right an underlying problem at this biological individuality is the mthfr mutation you may have heard of it it, there's a particular gene that deals with the methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase enzyme. That enzyme itself dictates how well your body is able to methylate. Methylation is the neutralization of toxins. And when you're a poor methylator, you're going to find yourself being less effective at removing toxins and your cellular functioning will be affected. So depending whether you have none one parent or both parents with the gene and whether it's expressed or not, 
your outcomes may be very different. In fact, we're finding that people who are getting um, a difficult course of illness are the ones with the MTHFR uh, from both parents and activated. So what, what is my suggestion that you do to, to prepare or to avoid dramatic, difficult outcomes? Are you digging your grave with your fork? It really is that. When, when you're eating the wrong foods, you're making yourself worse. I mentioned 80% of the immune system is actually residing at the interface of your digestive system and your bloodstream. Think on it. There's this bizarre um, distortion of food costs because the government is subsidizing grains, uh, wheat, soy, and corn. There, there are billions of dollars being given to farmers to grow more of this, so much so that it is now being used as a feed to feed animals, and uh, it's made into uh, high fructose corn syrup and, uh, and alcohol to drive automobiles. I mean, all kinds of bizarre distortion of the market. If we are going to subsidize something, we should be subsidizing or organic vegetables. Anyway, so eating inexpensive foods, the government subsidized foods, we end up with too much glucose in our bloodstream because the starch from the grains breaks apart into glucose, which then gives us uh, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or if you're the thyroid dominant, it gives you obesity, and uh, if you're the other types, you end up with uh, congestive uh, COPD, that's congest congestive obstructive pulmonary disease, essentially a lung problem. So as long as you start matching your genetics to your food choices, if your ancestors were Hunters, you want to eat like the hunters. If they were fishermen, you want to eat like the fishermen. If they came from the tropics, you want to try and eat like that. If your ancestor was an African grandfather who was taken from the Senegal or Ivory Coast, think on that. There was probably lots of coconut and a lot of fish. Probably no fried food and probably no corn or grits. Anyway, a lot of products is available at Life Enthusiast website, and uh, I'm just throwing on the screen some pictures of items that might be helpful to you. You can find them there. We are going to try and support you as best as we can. The, um, we tried to create a category that deals with the immunity as best as we can. We have the concerns, concerns of the 5G. Voltage-gated calcium channels, these are the gates that get activated by the uh, EMFs. When you open the calcium gate, the cell goes into the stress. So you will see headaches, mood swings, itching. I went and looked up some websites with, uh, with maps where you can see where the 5G antennas are being activated. So uh, and perf.com and speedtest.net both offer very well-constructed um, websites where you can find out just how saturated your neighborhood might be. You can uh, talk to us at life-enthusiast.com. <clears throat> Call me at 866-543-3388.